100 days ago, this was just a normal Minecraft world. This mod turns the skulk up to 20, making the warden look like a glorified teddy bear. Because the horde learns, it grows and evolves. It has your name and wants to add you back to the collective. These mobs will hunt down anything, absorb all life in the world. So I'm gonna try to survive 100 days and not only survive, but push the horde back. And hey, if you wanna join the Skulk Horde, there's a new t-shirt and bomber jacket available on the store right now. Head over to lagundo.store to check them out. But now it's time to start our story at the end of the world, day one. All right, so uh, that right there, that's a problem. <laughs> and it's going to take over the whole world very, very quickly. I quickly spent a little bit of time just punching at it to see what it would take, how fast it grows, and it's going to dominate the whole world. You saw the intro. I made myself some basic wooden tools, wooden pickaxe, wooden ax, set the marker for ground zero, grabbed myself some berries for food, and then just started running. We're gonna to wanna to get away, far away, so we have time to establish ourselves some basic gear before we're gonna be fighting the infection head on. I upgraded to stone and then iron, killed whatever I could find because any living thing around here is just more food for the horde. And believe me, it was hungry. Look at how far it's already spread. Oh, it's just working its way and worming its way out. Oh, this is, are you a good bee or a bad bee? Okay, you're, you're a normal bee, but I'm sorry. I wasn't just killing that bee for fun. There is a reason. Bees, the skulk versions, are like the worst possible thing you can see out in the world. But I'm grabbing myself some sugarcane because that's going to become important. You'll see why in a little bit. Making my way out to a plains biome with some caves. I was able to get some iron, deal with a few creepers that were hiding inside, and kill some sheep to get myself some wool for my first bed and my first night's rest. The following day, I continued running along the ocean, trying to see just what is around the local area. I made my way into a frozen space and I've seen the thing, maybe that will keep the alien horde back in some way. I took advantage of the additional travel speed using my boat on both ice and water, potentially being a little bit panicked that this killer whale was going to eat me at some point in time, but I think they share the dolphin AI, so it was friendly. I did kind of stand on top of glaciers to make sure though first. I continued my way across the entire frozen ocean area, staying in the cold biomes to think that that would buy myself a little bit more time. As I made my way up to a pillager outpost, I grabbed whatever supplies I could get out of the chest on the roof, getting some rudimentary iron, which would help me kickstart a little bit faster. Smelting up what I had collected and then looking what I could build as far as armor, because I'm gonna need it really quick. Quick sleep in the attic of my murderous neighbors and I was off the next morning, heading into slightly more temperate climates, killing whatever animals I could find. Mostly for food, partially to deny them the mass to the skull cord, and then making my way into a village where I'm gonna steal everything that isn't nailed down. There's a lot of coal blocks around here which will come in handy. I'm cooking my meat on the campfires that I'm finding around and seeing things like iron ingots, compasses, bread, chests, paper. All of this will be very useful. One of the biggest things though was the string find. Just being able to cut all these cobwebs is gonna come in super handy and having animals around that I can eat also pretty good. But I went down for a quick nap in the village and dreamt about this video's sponsor, The Stride Network. If you've been watching me for a while, you've heard of Stride before. They sponsor us back in the Aether video when they had just released their Clumsy Crew game mode, which is an obstacle course minigame similar to Fall Guys and Only Up. And back then, I mentioned their build competitions. Well, Stride has partnered with me, sponsor and design the next one. They're making their next build competition all about Skulk, where you can include that block in your build palette in any creative way and be entered to win your part of the $200 prize pool. You're gonna have 24 hours to build in this competition, making your best Skulkified creation. And I'll be hanging out on their server at 7 p.m. Eastern next weekend, sit around and check out your builds, offer advice, and be a part of the process. Stride has its own custom SMP, mini games like Clumsy Crew, redstone competitions, and the build battles. I can't wait to 
see you all there. It's gonna be a lot of fun. So make sure you join Times and IP are right here on screen. Join at mc.stride.gg. And with that little bit of fun out of the way, let's get back to the apocalypse as I continued my looting and larceny of the village. Maybe I should do a pillager 100 days one of these days. But I killed basically every cow I could find, finding a full set of iron armor on one of the armor stands, which helped me complete my look with some bow upgrades from the walls, some additional bread from the chests, and all of my food cooked up. My inventory is looking very full very quickly, but we're going to do something about that. I made myself a sword, went up and finally cut all those cobwebs, and crafted up a sophisticated backpack. This would greatly increase my overall storage and upgrading it to iron right away meant that I had six rows, basically a double chest strapped to my back at all times. And you also know me and fireworks and crossbows. I keep trying to make them work, finding a whole lot of fireworks in the central town square of this village and stealing basically all of them. That continued into the next morning where I found some TNT in someone's attic and whew, this village goes absolutely hard. That's going to come so in handy though. Any little bit of weaponry or advantage is going to be crucial. It might not seem like it right now. It might seem like a very tame start to the 100 days, but this is going to get very bad very quickly. And I need this tiny bit of prep time to make sure I have any chance at survival. Oh no. <laughs> oh no, I can already see it from here. <laughs> Oh, that's not good. Uh, we're gonna, oh. Oh, that's not good. That's gonna start sending out scouts soon. That, that is a problem. That is a capital P problem. <laughs> Seeing that the skulk is already spreading, I need to keep on the move. First things first was finding some obsidian from a nearby nether portal. I don't have diamonds yet, so this is gonna come in really handy. Marking the location because there's gold and other things here which are definitely going to be useful. I was enjoying the fact that I was fighting just some vanilla mobs in a cave underneath this portal, sleeping out in the field going into day six, where there was another nearby pillager tower that I went over to go loot, mainly for the arrows and other supplies that would come in handy, and checking the spawn, it already looks so much worse. I made my way back over towards the village and then through a cherry blossom biome that was right here. It looks peaceful and idyllic, if only it's going to turn into a wasteland. Finding another village relatively close by and grabbing a whole bunch of flint and then the anvil from one of their scarecrows there. That's going to save me a lot of iron. But I don't really need to worry about iron when I'm just grabbing blocks from everywhere that I can find it. I slept in the attic of that house before spending the next morning basically shoveling gravel the whole time just trying to get myself more flint. I need that for arrows and fletching tables, but I'm definitely also going to need diamond armor because look how much it's already spread its spawn. This is moving and it's only going to accelerate. I saw some caves in a nearby mountain that I thought maybe would lead down to the deep slate level where I'd be able to pick up some diamonds or other resources. Following those down, I kept going hitting a mine shaft because of course I did, and then an ancient city. Now this is the Skulk Apocalypse, but this is not where the apocalypse began, at least not initially. Grabbing a bunch of gold as well, because I'm gonna need that to be able to work on a cure to push the Skulk back. And while the deep dark is normally the most stressful thing in vanilla Minecraft, this was going to be tame compared to what was coming but I definitely needed the gear that was hidden inside. Using some shears, I was harvesting up the wool pathways here since I didn't have time to prep for anything else, making sure to block off all of the shriekers and carefully navigating from chest to chest to chest. That hoe that I found would be an absolute godsend, basically carry me through the entire 100 days, and some protection armor is nothing to sneeze at either. I'm carefully sneaking my way around, making sure to wool off any chests that I find, getting whatever I can. All of it will be useful. It did get to a few points where Shriekers were unavoidable, but there were some pretty decent books in there, so it made it somewhat worthwhile, and I have multiple strikes to work with before I need to worry about a Warden summoning in. But this is not the deep dark of vanilla. No, it is not lifeless, except for the Warden. The Mites are here. 
Those are skulk mites, and they're basically stage zero of the infection. They'll burrow into any mob, and when that mob dies, it drops a whole bunch of skulk. They basically reproduce through other creatures. And the fact that they were here in the deep dark, way far away from spawn, was not something that I knew this mod did. So that was terrifying. I found some unbreaking diamond pants, which are gonna come in very, very handy. All I need to worry about is protection now, grabbing potions and other supplies and trying to work my way up on experience that I could fast track myself towards enchanting. I'm also mining up any diamonds that I find, accidentally setting off another shrieker. That's strike two. And shortly after that, hitting strike three, thinking I had protected something that I very clearly didn't. A few seconds after that though, I thought I had maybe triggered a fourth because I heard a noise that sent shivers down my spine. Oh no. Okay, that, that was not a warden, that was something worse. That is a grave mind. That means it's going to start hunting. At this point, a warden is the least of my concerns. And almost as if on cue, I did happen to summon a warden right as I said that line. It's almost like I jinxed myself and I really shouldn't have tempted fate. But my main priority was just getting out of here. The map was already skulked all the way up on the surface of the mountain, which meant I needed to extract myself from this situation as quickly as possible. But in working my way back up to the surface, there were still vanilla mobs I needed to contend with. That is a lot of creepers. <laughs> I continued burrowing along through the world in the, my little tiny safe one by two tunnel, hitting water that led up to the river directly next to the village that I was living in. The mountain was already pretty visibly covered in skulk. Hi, this is editing Lagundo. That is underselling it. That's all I'm gonna say. It gets very worse. But my pockets were full from all of the deep dark loot and we're gonna need to go back. We're gonna need more. So I thought let's upgrade the backpack again. See what else I could potentially add to it. First things first was a crafting grid upgrade which would allow me to craft from anywhere. I could be much more on the move. I also upgraded it to gold adding another three rows of inventory. All of that's gonna come in very handy. I dropped off anything that I didn't think I would need immediately in a chest here in the village, storing it off because this would be kind of my forward operating base. My biggest holdback was blaze rods, as I was banning myself from the nether for this 100 days challenge, which meant that I couldn't get into any potion brewing or anything else along those lines, unless I could find another way to somehow access that in the overworld. But I spent a whole bunch of time looking at the mod pack and I hadn't given myself that opportunity. So now worried that I had two skulk nodes to worry about, the main one and then that ancillary node, I just spent a little bit more time making sure that I had basically taken anything of use from the village because I didn't know how long it was going to last. The following day, I spent some time cooking up all of my iron and gold, just getting that smelted before heading off in another direction, just exploring what else was out and around here and another way to potentially get more supplies. In doing a really big loop, I found myself back at the mountain on top of that deep dark. Oh my God. <laughs> that just spawned yesterday. Look at how much of the mountain that took over that quickly oh that's not good oh this is such a problem we need to find one of those hives that we can get the stuff that we need to like cure this issue <laughs> i approached the mountain in the bravest possible way that i could oh the last thing i want to do is approach this at night and quickly slept here on the trees going into day 11. And the next day, with the sun out, I was finally ready to brave the mountain, but the sounds and the infection spreading so quickly had me concerned. Oh, that's one of the summoners. Okay, we need to be very careful of that, or can we, we get around to it? Oh, that's huge. And let me tell you, I was not prepared for what I was about to run into. Oh my God. That's a ravager. That was a ravager. 
<laughs> okay. Um, that is a Skulk Ravager. That is what's also known as a big freaking problem. Every little bit here would help. Everything would hold the horde back, even for just a few extra seconds. And over time, that would add up. But right now, I was fighting a losing battle. Oh, this is bad. What is that? Please don't tell me that's infested. That's almost, that's almost certainly infested, right? It's got skulk on its head. What is that? What is that? Oh, that's horrifying. I don't see any hives. Oh, there's just more of the summoners already. I just saw mites there. Oh, this is, oh great. There's one of those things too. Now that's constantly spawning spores. Can I get that? Almost. Okay, that's good. That's good. We've killed, I mean, it amounts to nothing, but we're trying. That's worse. <laughs> that is so much worse. <laughs> okay, we need gold. We need lots of gold very quickly. Knowing that the mountain was no longer safe, I ran away for a while, sleeping in the middle of a field before starting to think that I desperately need to upgrade off of just plain iron armor. I found another set of caves and started diving down, delving to a point where I'm gonna see diamonds somewhere, hopefully at least. And yeah, I found some gold, some diamonds, and fought off a few creepers, which comparatively now don't feel super dangerous. There were also some enchanter mobs and other things that I had to fight down here that you wouldn't just see in the vanilla game, but we are oh so far off of vanilla at this point. This should be pretty obvious. I was fighting a few endermen to get pearls, mainly for escape routes if I happen to get into a bad situation, spending almost the entire day mining up a bunch of whatever I could and heading back to the village to smelt up all of the gold because I'm gonna need that for gold apples, which are an essential part in the curing process of this worldwide infection. The next day, I headed to yet another nearby village, which was just over the ridge. Having three is good, so I have a bit of a backup, and there's a lot of supplies in here, especially in this one, which has this kind of market space, which has things like enchanted books just sitting on the walls, and pearls, which I was trying to kill Enderman for that yesterday, so it's gonna come in handy. I keep looking on the map to try to gauge or check where the infection is actually spreading to, but it's starting to hit to the point where I doubt it's updating in real time anymore, especially not on the closer mountain, which would need to be loaded, unlike the spawn. So I headed back over in that direction, sleeping at the river, and doing a little bit more peeking around, heading back over to where it spawned to see how accurate my map was compared to the situation that was actually developing here. And it's pretty accurate. I mean, it's bad. It, it definitely looks bad. With the trees being infected, all of the leaves gone, and the ground converted to nothing but skulk. But we can't just run from this situation. We need to take it head on. Because as I started researching again, what would it take to cure this situation? There are two main things that I need. The first is skulk resin, which you can harvest from underneath skulk beehives, which only happen in the areas that are deeply infected. So you have to fight your way in. You can't just run. The second is calcite clumps, which are even harder and require getting close to a grave mind to collect. And that is definitely going to be tough. So I'm basically just patrolling around the outer barrier of the infection at spawn, trying to see if I can see any potential hives. Just especially if one is easy to get to, I can get underneath and start collecting the resin so I can start fighting back before the infection gets too bad. The problem is it's evolving, which means it's spawning more and more difficult and powerful mobs as I'm probing in. As I push, it pushes back. And the fact that there's drowns with tridents right outside of the infection zone doesn't really help either. But I thought, why don't I loop around to the other side that isn't just a massive hill right next to a lake. So the following morning, I did that, just patrolling around that edge, again, just trying to find a single hive, because if I can get to that, then I can start pushing back against this thing. If I don't, it's a losing battle. 
Thankfully, the one good thing about this is I will never run out of experience in this hundred days as I can just mine my way away with that god hoe that I was able to find in the ancient city. Unfortunately, if you're not careful, you do end up summoning a whole lot of things to fight you. I don't know what the heck that is, but it is moving way too fast. So that's an infected Vindicator. Can you tell that I installed this mod and started playing it? Before fully researching it, I wanted to be surprised. I was mainly afraid. I was able to bow that down though, continuing to mine around the edges of the Skulk infection, getting myself up to level 17, which allowed me to put the swift sneak book that I had collected onto my diamond pants. Now they were pretty much perfect. So with one objective done, I'm still scouting to try and attack the other. <gasps> Wait, <gasps> the bees. The bees, there's a hive. There's a hive right there. That's what we need. I mean, it's pretty close. So we need to get underneath that hive. Oh, it's not great, but it's possible. All right, we have a plan. <laughs> we have a plan. I mean, I'm not gonna say it's a good plan, but it's a, it's a plan. I'm gonna have to fight my way in to where the horde is. And to do that, I'm gonna need to be prepared. A bunch of food so I can heal some golden apples so I can heal even harder when I inevitably get hit. And one quick nap later, we're going in on day 16. Oh, Fox, you wanna leave. This is not a good place for you. Oh, that's a Ravager. So this is going to be tricky. The horde naturally wants to defend itself. And the more threatening that I appear to it, the stronger mobs that it will spawn. And the closer I push in to where that hive is, the more threatening I appear. It's this big death spiral if you're not careful. And the main thing I need to do is take out these spore spewers at range to slow down the growth of the skulk so that I can get in in between waves because it costs it mass in order to spawn those mobs. So fighting it does in fact kind of starve it for resources. The problem is those resources would very happily eat my face. Oh, I'm out of arrows. And now since I couldn't fight at range, this was about to get a whole lot worse. I continued pillaring up thinking, maybe I could trick it. Maybe I can cause them to die of fall damage. Oh, this is a bad place to be. But unfortunately that didn't really work. The mobs still have some semblance of self-preservation even though they're now controlled by the hive mind. But not being able to take this assault on the ground, I'm just bridging over certain death beneath me trying to get my way towards that hive and box myself in. Wait, what's that? Burrowed and lure. What does that even mean? Sensor's right there too. Well, I hate that. I'm starting to feel a little out of my depth in this moment, so I bridged out and away to get away from the Ravagers, hoping they'd either despawn or lose aggro. Just swimming out into the lake and eventually finding a bucket of lava. And I'm thinking, you know what? It worked for the thing. It might just work for the Skulk mobs too. That's annoying that I just wasted my Ender Pearl. And as I was heading back with the Skulk mob still floating in the lake, something else was just chilling there with their llamas. <laughs> This wandering trader shows a very bad place to live. And I gotta admit, this wandering trader has the most guts I've ever seen of any wandering trader ever. We're trying to sell things here and now. As tempting as all of that is, I don't think we're gonna take it. But with lava in hand, I have one more shot to try to do this, to get towards that hive. So I bridged my way in, slept on that bridge so I could see what I was doing, and started burning everything the following morning. Now I have to be careful because I am up on a tree, a normal tree, a tree that can still burn. I'm basically just really committing to pyromania for a bit here. The mobs do still naturally pathfind away from it, but I can do my best to try to push them into it. And I crafted up a tiny bit of arrows, but ended up helping the horde as I spread skulk via a catalyst. But over time, I just spent multiple trips running and getting cobblestone, coming back, extending the bridge, trying to break sensors before mobs would spawn, failing, and spawning a whole bunch of mobs. Yep, very stupid. 
And I'm using that single bucket out of lava I have as the only weapon that can really fight the horde right now. I have to be careful though because the ravagers, I found out, can swim up that and would try to eat my face. So that would be very, very bad. I got to the point where I was burning the bees and the spore spewers, but more summoners were starting to spawn, meaning we were right back to the point where everything I did spawned in more mobs and caused me to get delayed even further. Oh, come on. Eventually I got within striking distance of the hive, but I have to dig underneath it to get to the resin. And in doing so, I'm fighting things like that creeper, which when it explodes, immediately infects a massive area around that location. And every infection makes the horde that much more aggressive. So now we're dealing with more ravagers and the cows, which summon just tons of mites. I honestly feel really bad for the cows. They get the worst deal in this whole thing. But I fought through the night into the morning, burning everything that I could and eventually getting to the point where I'm feeling like it's time to just commit to do the best that I can. Because the hoarder is starting to infect the cobblestone that I was using to bridge in. And I don't know if that meant that it was going to be able to start spawning on my bridge instead of underneath it. So I went down, boxed myself in, got to the point where the resin could spawn and got a whole one piece. All of that, all of that work, three days worth of burying <laughs> for one resin, one. What do I need to make a purifier? Essence of purity, I need those. How do you even make infested crying obsidian? I don't know. <laughs> I need four. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> But at this point, it was time to tactically advance to the rear, getting far away from spawn and back over towards my village because I need to upgrade basically everything I have if I want any chance of surviving here. I fought my way through a few caves looking for some easy diamonds, heading up and over the mountain, passing by where the grave mine had spawned. Well, that's horrifying. Oh yeah, that's so much worse. <gasps> ooh, ooh, that might turn into a hive. And once I found my way back to the closest nearby village, there was emeralds on the table, cake waiting for me, and a bed, which I slept in quite happily. The following morning, I realized all the villagers were trapped inside the fountain, so I spent some time just releasing them. It's a pool party, not the end of the world. Come on, get with the program. Where well, I found a bunch more villagers that had trapped themselves inside of a pen. And I don't want to set up a full villager breeding station and trading and all of that. So I just dropped a composter down, trying to see if I can trade in all of the wheat that I have for emeralds that I could then hopefully convert into things like arrows, while I'm also focusing on mining up gravel to be able to craft the arrows manually at the same time. Eventually, I did get an amazing trade with the fletching table, both sticks and arrows. That's going to come in so handy. And now I can fight the skulk at range, which is great because only two of those mobs can actually attack me back at range. This is the tactical advantage. I made my way back up to the attic of one of the nearby houses, and it's time for everyone's favorite joke. And I use that to make myself an enchanting table because even diamond armor alone is not going to be enough to survive this. The following day, I'm still trying to roll for another villager who will have a wheat trade, eventually getting one about halfway through the day, honestly. I traded with them for almost everything that I could, grabbing every bookcase that I could find, stealing any bread I could get, and trading any logs that I could mine down into sticks for additional emeralds. I found the top of a house that had some bookcases in a pretty decent order already, using a bit of my remaining wood to make myself a full level 30 enchanting setup. The main thing I'm short on this point is lapis, and I'll have to go get that, but before I did, I got a ping from all of my mods, and we celebrated something together. Please. Oh, come on. Yes! Let's go! Watch it go down. <laughs> Thank you all so much again for 500,000 subscribers. By the way, there's only one week left on the 500K merch on top of the Skulk merch 
from this drop. So make sure you go get that before it's gone forever. But getting back on topic, getting back into things, I headed to the massive flooded caves that's directly next to the village, using some magma blocks to allow me to be able to breathe, mining up some lapis around here so that I could start doing the enchanting, heading down and digging through the aquifer into the caves proper, working my way down additionally into the deep slate level where I'm grabbing mainly more lapis because that's all I seem to be finding right now, getting down to a point where there's a ton of iron, a ton of gold, but not the diamonds that I'm really looking for. Striking out on that, I continued working my way through the caves, mainly elevating a little bit and mining through the stone level just for speed, heading over to another massive deep slate cave. Here I did a little bit of Enderman battling just to get myself some pearls, fighting off a few creepers and finding a decent bit of diamond. Enough where I'd be able to get a full set of armor, but as I got close to one of the walls, I heard a very disturbing squelching sound. Oh, that's not good. Oh, we're nowhere close. Oh no, that's so bad. If the skulk was already starting to grow directly underneath the village that I was currently calling home, it was only a matter of time before it'd break the surface and attack me in earnest. And once the grave mine gets to a certain point, it's actively hunting for me and for priority targets. You know what a priority target would be? This village. If it can kill everything here, that's a massive boost to its mass. So I need to be very careful and I need to start working on a cure ASAP. But I headed back to the village getting protection enchants on my armor. So I'm gonna need it very, very soon. I'm smelting up all of the gold that I possibly can, crafting up some golden apples, and then combining that with amethyst to get the essence of purity. With that, I can start actually fighting back against the horde. But I'm gonna need some sand for that because I'm gonna need to craft some of that into bottles. And I did a little bit of smelting throughout the night in one of the furnaces here in the village, getting myself a whole eight essence of purity and then starting on that process again. I'm gonna need a lot of these and half a stack is barely going to cut it. Day 22, now armed with a bit of a cure, I can think of one way which I can slow down the horde so that it won't immediately be attacking me. It's risky, it's very dangerous, but it is potentially the only way to fight back against this infection. I headed over towards where the grave mine was, retracing my steps down through these massive caves, climbing down the water and getting to the ancient city. From there, I threw my first purification flask and watched as it slowly chewed away the skulk, converting it back into dirt and turning everything from the sensors to the shriekers into grass. This is how you can fight back against the horde. Pushing back against the horde, I started slowly making my way through the ancient city, disinfecting areas as I started to push in and tracing my way towards that heartbeat that I could hear in the distance. That white sphere that was growing in the ceiling of the space, that's the grave mind brain, or at least a sub mind of it. And that's what's actively hunting me right now. So I need to just slowly make my way towards it. And thankfully, at this point, it's still all vanilla skulk. I'm just gonna get bad as we get closer. Thankfully, I found a few things that would help. I'm still looting while I'm at it because it turns out I had missed a few things. <gasps> oh, that's huge. Huge, huge. But I have to take this very carefully, especially as I get closer to the Skulk Mind. It's less the vanilla ancient city generation and more what you find in the mod, which means it's summoning mobs now and aggressively hunting me. And fighting them sets off sensors, which sets off more summoners, which sets off more mobs. You have to just worry about things cascading out of control very quickly. Thankfully, the purification flasks are doing a good job at pushing things back, and I'm able to kite around the Ravagers, shooting them the half a dozen or so times it takes to kill right now. I eventually ran out of blocks, so I needed to mine up the dirt that had been converted from Skulk, which had been converted from Deep Slate, which was the result of the infection. This is a weird block path. Eventually getting my way over towards the brain. Now, I'll admit, you see in the corner, I should have the darkness effect right now. Something with my shaders and darkness didn't really play nicely. So this is a little less dangerous than you would have if you were fighting it in vanilla, but I'm gonna take any advantage I can get considering everything in the world is eventually going to become part of a hive mind and try to eat me. So I very slowly mind my way in towards the brain 
and then was faced with a problem. This thing will regenerate. If you break the blocks, they'll just grow back. And without efficiency, it is super slow to mine at this thing. And purifying it didn't seem to do anything, at least not directly. So I really only had one choice. After the first blast did basically nothing, I reloaded again with some more, and it's growing back almost as fast as I can place the TNT. But eventually the node was exposed. This is gonna take a minute. And a minute it did. At that point, I was worried that it was going to be able to fully regrow before I could break the block. So I committed. <sighs> yes so the brain was gone that doesn't mean the whole thing was cured far from it the skulk would continue to grow just in a slightly less mature state the thing i had to worry about now was the warden that i just spawned i defeated a skulk node <laughs> Oh my god. Knowing that I had a bit of breathing time, I'd bought myself at least a few days. I spent some time mining up as much of the skulk as I could, grabbing whatever diamonds that I could find, and then slowly making my way back up and towards the surface. I torched the entrance so I could get back down to the ancient city without having to go to the mountain itself, slept in the village, and then now with a bit more time, spent some time mining up any skulk that I had collected and brought with me just to get my level up a little bit higher, and then focused on enchanting. First priority here was tools. Considering how slow it was to mine my way into those skulk brains, I'm gonna need something, and I can't be picky here either. I'm short on diamonds, so I'm enchanting my iron armor just so I have something. Feather falling is gonna be extremely important, and even just unbreaking on iron armor is worth it in this situation. It's the end of the world. You can't be picky. But I did see a Fortune 3 book, which is definitely something I want. So it's time to focus on earning experience, mainly through villager trading, which was able to get me up a few quick levels. And then I thought, let's head over to the next village nearby and see what they have. I ran and grabbed all of the wheat from there, which I could then turn in for more trades, sleeping and continuing to pillage my way through. I thought, considering I can't get to the nether or the end, I'm gonna need a faster method of transportation. So I started working on taming a horse and my friend here was actually pretty decently fast. Not having to worry about jumping up the very mountainous terrain separating these villages, I was able to get back home pretty quickly, doing a whole bunch of trades to get myself up to level 17, and then fighting off a few mobs, mainly for food, not so much for the experience. Once it started raining, I returned back to the village, did a little bit of mob breeding as well, and saw some villagers in precarious positions. I have so many questions. That's a mood. But taking full advantage of the breather I had bought myself, I was harvesting all of the farms that were here in the village, as well as finding a bunch of meat in a smoker cabinet that all I needed to do was light it up and get a whole bunch more meals ready to go. The next morning I crafted myself up a diamond shovel so I'd be able to mine sand a little bit faster, get that smelting, and convert that into more bottles, which is more purification flasks. From there though, I'm thinking about what I'm gonna need to take on the horde again. If another node spawns, I'm gonna need a lot more TNT. If I'm gonna head towards the central spawn, the ancient node, I'm probably gonna need a whole lot more. So I spent the evening fighting mobs and turns out Skulk is not the only thing trying to kill me in this world and is also not the only thing trying to jump scare me. <laughs> Maybe we just shoot them with the bow. But I fought my way through the night taking on some Endermen for pearls, any creepers that I could find for additional gunpowder and repeatedly being jump scared by the raccoons. That's not ominous at all. The following morning, I crafted myself up some TNT and this mod pack has a slightly modified TNT recipe because, well, I'll be honest, once you get to a certain point, only skulk mobs are spawning. So the little bit less as far as gunpowder requirements is good and requiring things like sugarcane when skulk hunts plants 
is definitely a bonus as well. I also realized that I had collected the resources to turn that horn that I had found on the pillager tower into a skulk horn, which would allow me to shoot out a giant skulk blast, which is fun. <laughs> Hello, cow. Goodbye, cow. <laughs> But I jumped on my horse heading back towards the nether portal that I had visited some 15 odd days ago, because there are two pieces of crying obsidian. Now I know I need infected crying obsidian. I'm pretty sure I know how to get that, but I'm not 100% certain, but just having it on me would definitely come in handy. As I was riding home, I did end up falling in a hole, which was kind of unfortunate. Took a little bit of time to dig my way out there, making my way back to the village, and then the following morning, we're getting at it to try to see what we can do next. The skulk was now spreading down the mountain, meaning I'm fighting it as I'm down at the tree level and there's a ton of summoners around. And the skulk is still very much active and aggressive even though there's no node underneath the mountain right now. All I've done is slow it down. Defeating the nodes is not how you kill it. You need to purify the whole world if you want a chance. But there is a new hive here and getting some resin from underneath that is probably easier than getting it from all the way back at spawn. So I worked on bridging my way in, using shears to get resin from all of the different kind of, I don't know what to call this, hive growth blocks underneath, and using the occasional purification flask to push back the infection a bit. I also threw down the crying obsidian right at the edge of the infection radius, thinking that's probably how it gets infected. At least that makes sense to me. And with that set off to cook, I figured I'd loop my way back around to spawn to see how far it had progressed here. Unfortunately, I didn't end up getting stuck in powdered snow and almost killing my horse. And doubly unfortunately, it was starting to cross the river, meaning that there was summoners all the way down to the coast, there was a ton of mobs spawning, and I'm losing a good portion of arrows just trying to hold everything back. I'm using the purification flasks a little bit here and there just to try to see how much damage they do to mobs. Spoiler alert, basically nothing. You need to kill them in the old fashioned stabby mode. But everything that I can learn is a little bit of information which will make me better at fighting the horde. The following day, I was on my way back over. I checked the crying obsidian. None of that had been infected as of yet, but it's possible the skulk just isn't growing in that direction direction or isn't growing as aggressively. I did make my way back up towards the hive, which had fully regened all the resin, so I was able to get four more of those. Heading over to meet up with my villagers, where I was able to convert a lot of emeralds into a lot more ammunition. And then we had a problem. Just over the hill from my village, a little scout was making their way over. There was a bee right here, a skulk bee this close. I mean, I killed it because, of course, I can't have it spreading spores but every place you kill a skulk mob is learned by the grave mines and they're going to come hunting. The next morning I headed back over the hill on foot back towards the grave mine site because if bees are starting to venture out from here, I need to push that back to try to delay it finding the village and knowing it's a prime raid target. There were spore spewers around which I needed to shoot and throwing down purification flasks to just push back on the infection and I figured, we're checking it at the surface. We need to check it underground as well. I headed down into the cave system, just seeing what was around, seeing where the skulk was kind of growing in the general westerly direction to where my base was. I'm using flasks to try to mine that all down, eventually finding exactly what was the problem. The infection had moved underground, mainly through mine shafts and other small caves down here, to the point where it had split the difference, already made it halfway to where I was based up. Oh, this is super close to the village. I just throwing purification flasks pretty indiscriminately, and there's the hive that that bee probably came from. The question I have is how it made it to the surface. I'm not sure about that, but at least I now know kind of how far it had reached. We had to do something about it. The main thing I could do is break the hives. That is priority number one. And I'm using a ton of flasks. I started with 32, I'm down to 10, and I've just been throwing them pretty willy nilly, honestly. As it rolled over to day 32, I'm fighting underground and setting off a few summoners, which is giving me some mobs to deal with, and I need to be careful here. 
but it's very close quarters. So the super dangerous mobs, the ravagers, are normally getting caught inside the mine shafts and not able to come munch on my face directly. While I was down here, I did some looting. There's still vanilla creepers to deal with. There's the mine shaft where you can get a whole bunch of things in the chests and a ton of gold, which is great because I have a feeling I'm gonna need a lot more purification flasks very soon. But in exploring around this cave system, seeing the full extent to which the skulk had grown and how far it was probing out into the rest of the overworld, I got an idea of just how bad this was going to get. I actually ended up underneath the mountain directly adjacent to my village. Thankfully, I had the purity buff, so I didn't have any spores on me. I don't think I could be tracked. Unfortunately, the bees were even closer this time, no longer on the top of the mountain, now down in basically one of my villagers' backyard. It seems now the question was when, not if, this village would be compromised. But I'm gonna do my best to make sure that takes as long as possible, making a whole new set of flasks the following day, and just looking around to try to see where it was growing up to the surface. If those bees were spawning up here, that meant that there was a hive a lot higher up than down in the deep slate. And I investigated in some of the caves around here, finding another bee, and a section where the skulk was actually pretty close up to the surface. I spent some time, basically the whole day, just cleaning this cave. Between throwing flasks and manually breaking all of the skulk vines, I was able to trace my way down and through to see how that connected to the mine shaft that I had been in just the previous day. When I went up to check the surface a little bit more at the end of the day, there were more bees, so this is only going to get worse. And realizing just how close these actually are, the following day I was visited by another wandering trader and this one was not as lucky to survive the end of the world. I wonder what happened to them. But in going and checking on my crying obsidian, it had still not been infected. It seems like the skull cord was focusing on prioritizing underground growth right now to be able to pull some sort of sneak attack instead of moving overtly over the grass. So I moved the crying obsidian a little bit deeper in, and I also thought about throwing a few flasks to push the infection back to see if it would try to regrow and gain the same space. But while that was working, I'm thinking it's gonna be bad soon. Let's get whatever else we can out of this village. I'm breeding all of the mobs that I can, finding another closet full of meat that I was able to cook up, and seeing a zombie piglin up on the surface. And considering we had no nether portals in this world, that pig got struck by lightning. Imagine the odds of that. Does that count as streamer luck? I think that counts as streamer luck. The next day I converted everything I had into more TNT. It was probably not enough to kill another node, but one is inevitably going to spawn and I wanted to be prepared for when it did. I headed back over the mountain to check on my crying obsidian. It had not yet expanded into that. And I figured let's go back down into the caves and try to hold the infection back from my village as long as humanly possible. Taking advantage of the high ground, shooting down to any mobs that I potentially would encounter and using flasks wherever possible to push back the infection. I'm just trying to hold it back to do what I can, but the regular creepers wanted my death too. In my panic for running from that creeper, I set off another summoner, which summoned a ravager, which was trying to chase me, and I ran down one of the caves, blocking myself up in a one by two hole with only two hearts underground in the middle of the horde. This is the worst I had been by far. Taking my time to collect myself, avoid any potential confrontation, I just slowly mined my way back up to the surface, avoiding anything else in my way. In the process, as it rolled over to day 36, I broke my pickaxe without paying attention. I was just so focused on trying to escape. So I had to craft myself up a new one, wasting essential diamonds, but securing my safety, at least for now. I made my way back up to the surface, looking to see what my new pickaxe would roll at, and Fortune 3 was an option, but I didn't have the time to get myself up to level 30, so I settled for Efficiency, Fortune, and Unbreaking. A lesser version, but at least it's something. After a bit more trading with my villager friends, also taking the time to invest some money into food, I never buy food, and I always run out of food in these 100 days, I made some more golden apples, made some more purification shards, took a quick nap, both in real life and in the game, and as soon as I logged in the next day, I think some sort of cooldown had ended, because things were about to accelerate. Oh no. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I knew that was coming, but I didn't know it was gonna happen right away. Now here's the worst problem. I don't know where that is. 
It could be at spawn. It could be here. It could be right underneath me. And I have no idea. Uh-oh. Okay. Um. Oh, we have work to do. The advantage I had with the first node is I knew exactly where it had spawned. This time, I was nowhere near as lucky, so it was going to be a guessing game on where I needed to go. This is also about when my PC exploded and I had to build a brand new one, so I did spend some time geeking out on just how far I could push the settings to be able to get better recordings for you all, and I was very excited to be able to basically double my render distance. But I headed over towards the hive because I'm going to want more resin to be able to get myself more purification flasks and the auto purifying machines. But we're summoning quite a few mobs in the process and I'm just trying to take out as many as I can, grabbing the resin and then running down the mountain, heading back over the hill and back towards home. Do I not even have a bed in my inventory right now? I don't. Not being able to sleep in the field, I made my way back to the village, had a quick nap, and then the following morning was focusing once again on clearing the caves underneath the mountain to try to hold the horde back from attacking the village as much as I could. The problem was, as I was heading to where I knew the skulk was, I started hearing more crawling through the walls. Oh no. <laughs> I don't like that sound. Oh no. So the skulk was a lot higher up now, which was a bit of a problem. I cleared a few of the mobs around here, just throwing down some torches to secure a beachhead from more vanilla threats before starting to mine around, trying to see if I could get my way towards whatever skulk was there and if I could do so from the high ground. At one point, the blocks I was mining started infecting underneath my feet, and I think I found where I wanted to go. Working my way down, as soon as I turned a corner, I saw a whole horde of spore spewers. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Now, I initially had panicked, just ran, and I'm like, wait, no, I need to go and kill those as soon as possible. So I headed back down, sniping at them from as far away as I could. There's like three or four right here. I don't know how they spawned so aggressively, but it's very clear that the horde was trying to track to my location and get towards me. This is probably how they had made it this far west. Oh, this is bad. This is very bad. I did everything I could to just cure and purify that cave but it made me think that it would just find another emergence point to the surface, potentially even closer to my village very soon. The following morning, we're continuing to just try to hold the line. Then I got a very concerning message which popped up. A skulk infested enderman is scouting out a possible raid location. Keep an eye out. Oh, oh no. Oh no. Okay. 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 Don't panic. Don't pa I'm panicking. I'm panicking. Because that means... Oh, if it finds the village, the village is toast. If it finds me, I'm toast. I don't know what to do. <laughs> it got so much smarter so quickly. Oh, it's gotten so bad. Okay, okay. Let's do what we we're going to do. And now that you saw me in all five stages of grief, about one minute later, this happened. Oh my god. Why would you make that that loud? Why? But my crying obsidian still hadn't been infected. So I grabbed a piece of it and thought, let's head over somewhere that I know should be growing pretty aggressively. So I headed over to spawn, trying to work my way in and get a little bit of a... I don't know, a route of attack here, given that the terrain is pretty aggressive, especially trying to do so on horseback, fighting off a lot of the mobs across the river, utilizing the fact that they're pretty slow in water as my only saving grace here. I slept on the side of the river, went and collected my horse, parking them in a little two by one hole, before heading over and throwing a purification flask to push the infection back, and then another, and then another. This also caused mobs to spawn, so I was fighting skeletons and ravagers the entire time, but I got to a point where I'm basically pushing in towards where the skulk is already sure to be underground, 
Just out of range of these tiny little bottles bridging from tree to tree, I thought, here's my shot. Once a whole chunk of land had been cleared, and I saw it was at the point where the Skulk Infection was trying to retake the space, this is where I thought I could get the obsidian infected relatively easily. I jumped down to the surface, dropped the block off, and booked it because this is brave, but I'm not stupid. I know I'm gonna get eaten if I just stand there waiting. The next morning, I actually spread out the crying obsidian a little bit to try to just double down in case the skulk was growing in one area or another, fighting off all of the mobs until eventually I saw that deep purple turn to a corrupted cyan. And once I was able to get in there and get it, we had what we needed. Leaving the second of the blocks there to get converted at some point in time in the future, I had jumped on my horse and started to leave. I would made a dent in the skulk, but you really couldn't tell if you didn't know exactly how far it had spread previously. And in working my way back towards the village, I was feeling at least moderately good. I crafted the crying obsidian into the crying souls, which is step one of the purification process. And I'll have to combine that with the calcite clumps, which means I'm gonna have to get very close to where grave mind is in order to find some of that. Cause we're not talking the calcite that you get on the outside of a geo. No, this is more skulky, probably more squishy. That cat wasn't the only one either because I'm gonna have to head back down into where I know the grave mind is, where the skulk is probably at its strongest and try to find the calcite clumps that were growing from here from skulk living rock. These spires grow anywhere near a grave mine. So if I can find them, I can find what I need. I'm grabbing all of the golden diamonds that I see while I'm around here, all of the amethyst as well, because that is another essential ingredient. Grabbing some of the different skulk materials and other things that I can find here, because for once, this place isn't inherently directly murderous, and I had a little bit of time to search around. But I kept hoping at one point in time, I would hear the heartbeat just from around the corner, off in the distance, give me a clue where the grave mine had respawned, but I didn't. Which honestly is uh, worse, because I have no idea where that node could possibly be. Look at the entire world. I have no idea where that node could be. Could be down here more, could be somewhere completely new, which is terrifying. Speaking of terrifying, I hate it. But maybe because it was late at night IRL, I didn't see any living rock down in that area. So instead I just followed my path that I had been through before, getting back up onto the surface and returning back to the village. I was able to combine two of the different diamond pants that I had collected to get myself protection on my pants finally, getting a helmet enchanted and setting up a smithing table to mainly go for fashion game, we're using that amethyst to put the silence armor trim on everything. There we go. That looks good. I smelted up all of the gold into more golden apples, crafted more pure shards, took a quick nap and headed back over towards the mountain. I had returned via underground, so I had forgotten that I left my horse over here. Where did I park my horse? Oh, <laughs> I keep forgetting it's right here. Oh, that's why I went there in the first place. I needed the, the cap. I forgot. As soon as I got the cool loot, I forgot. I need the calcite clump. Calcite, calcite? Is it just calcite? It's calcite, but a different kind of calcite, apparently. I completely forgot why I went to the that section. I'm an idiot. So now that I remembered what I was actually there for, because I got distracted by loot, I rode back over towards my parking spot, dropped the horse back off, marked it on the map this time, so I'll remember, headed back down into the cave system, finding a very decked out skeleton who didn't drop any of that gear, rude, and some calcite, but it was the amethyst kind and not the skulky kind, but I was able to get a whole bunch of amethyst shards. Heading back down and sneaking around, I saw, and this might be a little hard to see on the video, this slightly blue cobblestone looking spire drilling down from the ceiling. And that's the living rock that we need to go and mine. I worked my way mining through all of it, just trying to find the calcite ores. And I do have fortune, which is going to come in handy. And I eventually found one, getting a single piece of calcite. We're gonna need a lot more than that, but thankfully there was a 
decent bit of ore in here, and I was able to get more than enough for several purifiers. After that, we made our way back out of the ancient city, avoiding setting off far too many sensors. I summoned a warden, but really, what's a warden compared to the horde at this point? Making my way back out through the river entrance and seeing yet another skulk bee, this time directly in the city itself. But as I exited the river and saw a skulk bee off in the distance, I thought that would be my biggest problem. But instead, this was. Is that another one? Where's the bee, where's the bee, where's the bee? Okay, 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 okay. That's another one. There's two nodes active now and I have no idea where. Oh, this is bad. No, 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 no. Holy crap, we gotta run. What is that? What is that? What was that? That had a boss bar. Oh, and it, I think it is in the village. A skulk enderman is infesting a raid target. Oh no, are they attacking the village? I just, yep, yep, that's, that's bad. Oh no, <laughs> oh no. That's, that's right next to the village. That's where the node must have spawned. I sneaked my way around and over the snow-capped mountains to the south of the village, just trying to get eyes on the Enderman, seeing it and being terrified of the prospect of fighting this thing. And in the time it took, less than a full day, you saw that I just came over that hill and it was fine. And now look at it. Covered in skulk, completely infected. A brand new emergence point. <laughs> Things were about to get very bad. And the next morning, I was ready to test my chances. I think we have to try. Oh my God. That scared me. Please tell me it can take air damage, it can. Oh my god. Ow. Oh, that hurt, that hurt a lot. Hit me so bad I turned shaders off. Oh. Oh. Okay. 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 That cost me all of my god apples. <laughs> oh no. Fighting that thing cost me three god apples and almost all of my other resources and my village and home. The horde had gotten a whole lot smarter and things were about to get a whole lot more dangerous. The following day, I'm just walking around trying to take stock of what happened and how bad it's going to be. If a raid is even going to be spawned at my location. The cows and the mites are doing everything they can to attack me and the spewers on the top and hives up there. That's gonna make removing the skulk near impossible. I worked my way around the infection, fighting off everything that I could, sniping it back and realizing that it was growing in the direction that I was standing in and there was quite a few mobs very ready and willing to come and attack me. I fought them off throughout the entire day, then remembered that I had a marker on my map with that, I just got on my horse and ran. I went around the far edge of the skulk, getting back towards the village where the house that I was in now had a bit of a mold problem on the front door, sleeping there and preparing to completely abandon this place, but not before I gave it a good, honest try. I crafted up a purified soul, then crafting that into two infection purifiers. Now, 
These are the main way of fighting back the infection. When you put them down, they turn into an entity that will continuously push back. The problem is the horde's aggressive and tries to kill it. So you have to actively defend it on the ground. I got my horse stored off to a safe location using purification flasks to push a beachhead into the skull horde on the top of the hill fighting all of the spore spewers and doing everything I could to dodge creepers as they were actively fighting me trying to turn this back into dirt. From there, I made myself a little tower out of living rock and then spawned the purifier on top, hoping that that would be enough to protect it. It's working. It seems like it's working. I mean, it's definitely working. I don't think it's actually making a difference. The problem is, while the purifier is burning away mass, the Skulk Horde had accumulated a lot of it, and with two grave mines, it was even smarter. I left the purifier up there on the top of the mountain, ran down the hill, which was now covered in the blue cyan mess, and there's spore spewers all the way down in the village proper at this point. I am pretty sure this village is done for. So it was time to head out. I grabbed the enchanting table, anything else from the chests that I thought would be useful and tried to fight back a little bit, just tried to see what difference I could make before remembering I left both the horse and the purifier up on top of the mountain. Oh no, 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 no. I ran up to grab the purifier, saving that as having two of those, one of the only ways I even have a remote chance of protecting myself against this horde, because with this much mass and open space, it's about to start growing exponentially. But I jumped on the horse and ran. We both actually got infected by spores, but I didn't have any more purification flasks. So I had to smelt up sand on the fly, just standing over here in the field, giving it all sorts of hints as to where my location is. Eventually making myself the flasks, taking a quick nap, and figuring I shouldn't even bother considering I'm going to engage it a bit further. I dropped my horse back off, went up and grabbed all of the bookcases from in my house so that I could move the full enchanting setup, and then fought the skulk horde from the roof of the village here. And summoners were all the way down the mountain, spore spewers were all the way up on top. I figured maybe if I go down, around, and under, I can get some idea of where the node is. Give me some idea of a path of attack and I could slow this down, cut it off right here. I headed down through the caves underneath the village, making my way back to the same mine shaft I had been in previously. And while you could hear the skulk growing much more aggressively than before, there was no heartbeat, nothing to be found. That was until I dove deep down into the mine shaft off in the easterly direction and heard the telltale heart of the skulk beating. I marked the potential grave mine location on my map and then just focused on extricating myself from the situation. I was very low on supplies, had next to no arrows, no flasks, only one torch to my name. This was not how you take on the entirety of a hive mind who wants to consume the world. Believe me, I've tried. I worked on mining my way back up, hitting the aquifers underneath the village and swimming up from there to the river, which Previously bisected it from the skull cord, but now was not looking so hot. I went around the village cooking and killing anything that was left alive because I'd rather be food in my belly than food for the horde, and then rode my way over towards the grave mine site. My first thought here is this part of Skulk is somewhat dormant considering its Skulk node is dead and the village is the new place where growth is happening. So I grabbed the crying obsidian that I had left here and instead turned around placing it on the edges of the Skulk growth that had overtaken the hill by the village. With that, I threw down a purification flask to push the skulk back, knowing that it likes to regrow back in the same direction. So I threw down the crying obsidian, waited for the flask to wear off, then waited for everything to get reinfected. The only problem there being that it built far more summoners, which meant far more mobs that I had to deal with. And with two nodes, it was getting extremely aggressive. And I'm out of torches, so I'm just lighting the ground on fire to light my way as I'm bowing everything down from a distance. I had succeeded in infecting that block of crying obsidian, but had utterly failed in retrieving it. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> That's a lot of mobs. Oh, and it's spawning more. And more. Oh my god, what do I even do here? 
I made one final attempt from the roof of a nearby house, but it was just not looking good. Everything that I was doing was causing far more mobs to be spawned than those I was taking out. And once an enderman spawned, that was it. I'm sorry, horse and everything else, I am gone. No. The last time I fought one of those, it cost me three god apples. There is no way I can fight another. That village is done for. I mean, that village was already done for, but now that village is... I'm never going back there. That obsidian is now also done for. That's going to spawn another node. There's going to be three. There's going to be two right next to each other. Oh, that's so bad. Do I have another saddle? I have another... <laughs> I can make a new horse. <laughs> I can make a new horse. I don't need to save that one. <laughs> Where do I even go? Wondering where I should set up my new base of operations, I headed over to one of the nearby villages, cooking every bit of cow, pig, or other food with legs that I saw on the way. I eventually settled on looping my way around and working for the easternmost village. It would put me closer towards spawn, towards the grave mine site, and was a straight overland shot toward the area where the previous village had been taken over. I worked on breeding up a few animals just out in the wild, and then started taming my brand new horse, considering my old one had undoubtedly already become skulk food by now. Just as it started to become evening, it also started to rain, and this very well fits in thematically with how much of a midpoint failure this felt like. The world was becoming more skulk. All things shall be part of the grave mind. The following day, I'm thinking fighting an enemy this dangerous requires probably some kind of weapon that's a little bit more powerful. I had a bunch of dungeons weapons in here, so I was investigating how to potentially spawn them in, and it would cost me a lot of iron to potentially get that. While it would be good, I'm not sure it was 100% worthwhile. So instead, I focused on small things, sustainable food sources, stealing anything that wasn't nailed down and was even remotely useful, grabbing hay from the attics and meat from the closets, and don't take that the wrong way. As I was finishing my pillaging of the village, I started seeing messages about the Skull Horde successfully destroying objectives, which meant that there was a raid at the village I had just abandoned. Knowing that it was done for, I didn't want to engage, but I wanted to do some reconnaissance, see what a raid actually looked like. And the hill was very converted, but you can see the glowing mobs in the distance. This is only wave six out of 10. That village is effectively wiped off the map and everything inside reduced to more skulk. This is my new home now. I slept in my new home before going and mining up a few exposed emerald ore, which is free money. I always like free money. Running up and over the hill and doing a little exploring through the cave systems in the mountain right here. With it being very mountainous, odds are that there was probably another skulk node underneath here or potentially an ancient city. I found a dungeon relatively quickly, which I lit on fire to stop from spawning. That only worked for a few minutes heading down underground to investigate what would be down deep underneath the mountain. And I started by finding a bunch of silverfish, but eventually did find some deep dark. And it was pretty high up, already in the stone layer, which was making me think that this had been generated or grown from something that was a little bit further down. I spent some time using this to try to get myself up to level 30. That hoe was perfect for this, and that would get me up to max level enchants again, and I would be able to potentially enchant and upgrade some of my gear. And somehow, without doing a thing, I was the hero for the village I had left. Uh, success, I guess? On the way out, I threw down a single purification flask just to kind of cover my bases, maybe clip off the skulk before it would grow further up. And the following day, we're rebuilding. I made all of the bookcases that I needed using a few that were already here to get myself back up to max level enchants and starting to enchant on my weapons and armor. First up was an axe, getting silk touch, definitely gonna come in handy. Now I can move these bookcases without recrafting them. And after making a set of diamond boots and re-rolling a few times, I saw a guaranteed protection four enchant at level 30. And I have only about three levels to go. And I happen to know where I can get a lot of experience. The only problem is it was growing and it wanted to turn me into more of it. Oh my God. That's expanded so much. 
I made it all of the skulk around the edges, getting myself a little bit over 30 so I could do some additional rerolls, only having to deal with a few waves of mobs that had spawned in. At this point, I had a bit more experience, my armor was better off, so I wasn't panicking as long as Ravager didn't spawn. But it seems like the skulk had kind of reprioritized all of its mass into growth instead of aggression. Potentially the grave mines had gone dormant after a little while, considering the horde took a lot out of them. But they still were wanting to grow, with spore spewers everywhere. And I had a feeling things were going to continue to accelerate. The next morning, I returned back over towards the village and went to re-roll my boots. Losing feather falling sucks, but I need to be specced fully into protection to be able to tank all of the damage on all of these monsters. So I even have to re-roll my helmet, getting prot 4 on pending, but I need 30 levels. So let me head back over and... Oh, oh boy. Oh my god, look at the underground. It's just solid skulk. But the skulk wasn't the only problem. The seagulls were here too. This time I was a bit more careful, making sure to break the summoners first before harvesting up a whole ton of skulk, but it's still not perfect. And mobs will even spawn passively and or I set up a whole bunch of summoners and I just edited it out to make myself look better. But I got myself all the way up to level 30 again, rode my horse back over, took a quick nap there, and then enchanted my helmet for protection 4, immediately getting teased with a feather falling 4 book, meaning that I, <laughs> I think you know what I'm doing next. This time I thought, let's go in on the water and harvest some of those lower skulk areas, potentially get some idea on where the note is. Unfortunately, oh. Nope. <laughs> That's, that's a no. So there's an Enderman just chilling in that space. Oh, that's terrifying. So somehow, I think that's there from the end of the raid. It spawns as basically the 10th level boss. And even though the raid failed, it was still there, which is terrifying because that thing can basically one shot me. But I'm still pressing my luck right here. I need to be properly geared before I can take on the horde in earnest. So harvesting experience, returning back, getting myself a feather falling book, and then spending the next day doing a bit more enchanting, including enchanting a sword, getting fire aspect, which honestly damage over time seems like a really great opportunity here. I combined the books to get feather falling onto my boots, seeing some additional protection books that I was able to combine even further, but I can't afford to put that on my pants, at least not yet. I threw protection three on the chest plate. Now I feel like I'm at least able to take a hit. I don't know if this will even help against the Enderman's sonic shriek or if it's more like the wardens, but at least it makes me feel safer against the remainder of the mobs. Ravagers especially previously were basically a one shot kill. I spent the rest of the day just breeding up the mobs around the village. I'm not worried about penning and corralling them in one place because I think that makes them easier skulk food. So I'm just doing some free range mob collection today. And after dealing with a few villagers who were very concerned with my camping out in the roof of one of their houses, I had to deal with something out front of the house. Why did... Did... Did that raccoon have an axe? It's gonna shank me. This world is weird. So with that taken care of, the main thing I needed to do now was explore the world. I'd mainly been camping out around a few different villages and pushing in and around the areas where Skulk Infection was pretty bad, but I need to head out and find more ruined nether portals. Not only do they have gold, which I can use for golden apples, but they also have a shot at crying obsidian, which is kind of the main thing I need to prevent this whole infection. The first one I found was guarded by a trident drowned, and as much as I wanted that weapon, I wasn't able to get it. But I continued working my way around in a wide swath of unexplored forest off in the distance. And taking the time to travel on horseback definitely made this feel different than my main hardcore world, where I'd usually just fly with an elytra. And maybe it's because I was boots or hooves on the ground that I actually found something I've never found yet, a trail ruins. 
Now, I'm going to be honest, this this is just a fun little distraction in the middle of the end of the world. You have to find your joys wherever you can, and I'm finding a little bit of joy here, mainly because I want to try to find another armor trim to complete my look here, considering I had spent my only silence trim on my chest plate. I figure if I'm going to be a fighter at the end of the world, fashion game is the end game, and we are definitely in the end game for this reality. So I spent day 60 and 61 just excavating the trail runes, having a lot of fun with the archaeology minigame, basically, that exists in Minecraft now. And it's funny to think about how things like this used to be modded only, but now it's becoming more and more vanilla. And there's a whole conversation on whether vanilla is quote unquote too modded nowadays. But I do love how seamless additions like this feel, especially when I've built an entire new reality on top of it with all of the mods that we have installed. I was being super impatient though. Anytime I would start brushing on a block and it didn't immediately look like an armor trim was gonna pop out, I broke it. I also broke a bunch more that I didn't entirely intend to break. And I was about to give up, call it a wash, say that this was just another awful thing at the end of the world when just like two or three gravel patches left in the whole structure, I finally nabbed myself an armor trim. So at least now I could look better as I'm running around killing all of the skull cord and saving this world. I dropped all of the pottery shards into a chest here to preserve them for when you get the world download, if you either grab it down below or become a patron, and trimmed out my helmet. Going with the amethyst vibe because it feels like that's the main anti-skulk kind of thing. With that done, I jumped back on my horse and continued riding around, making my way all the way back to ground zero, the initial place where the infection had started and now was pushing back against the skulk a little bit more. I'm doing this mainly to try to punch a hole and push the infection back so that it'll regrow and take over the crying obsidian that I collected from the portal a few days earlier to reinfect that and allow me to make in a few additional purifiers. When it didn't work at spawn, I headed back over towards the mountain to do it, and, and while the area that I was chopping back didn't exactly convert, I was able to find a spot where it was growing naturally and just kind of put it in its way. With that taken care of, I went to go jump back on my horse, but unfortunately something had gotten to it first. <laughs> Turns out I had parked just a little bit too close towards the whole will infect any living thing and uses them to spread mob. And while I had to fight my way through multiple waves of both mites and the cows that they used to breed and skeletons that were trying to use me, I found things like leather and saddles sitting around, but no horse. I think that one died. At a full stack of days, I just hoofed it, walking my way back over to the village, which takes significantly more time when you have to jump up every single individual block. I took up my frustration mainly by killing cows, considering I had a fire aspect sword. It comes out as cooked steak, so this is a lot faster in converting food into food. And I figured let's tame a new horse somewhere around the village so that I could regain that one block jump. Unfortunately, the horses kind of sucked. Oh, this horse is garbage. Oh, I lost my good horse again. With my last few pieces of lapis, I was able to get a flame book, which is going to be really essential for upping damage on my bow. And I crafted up the crying obsidian into a pure soul, except now I'm out of a couple really essential resources if I want to keep upgrading. So I dropped off everything, jumped on a new horse, which was less bad, that's the best I can really offer, and headed out to see what was around. I was marking where the infection had grown to at this point, just trying to keep a marker on its current progression and to see if maybe it was accelerating or potentially slowing down. I did accidentally step on a spore spike, which infected the horse and not me, thankfully, using a purification flask to just pop that off. But my main thought is we need to try to find and destroy the next skulk node. I left my ride back in a safe position and scaled over the mountain, making sure to take a wide berth towards that previous entry point I knew existed. And you'll never guess what I found. How are you still alive? Oh my god. How are you still alive? The end of the world is a hundred blocks away, and you're just- Be free. You've earned it. I mean, you're gonna die now because of what I just did, but be- Wait. 
Wait! This is my first horse! I found my first horse again! Oh! <laughs> But with a bit of a celebratory mood, I dove down into the aquifers underneath the village, working my way back through towards the place that I had excavated myself out of after the first node had been defeated. I'm back into the mine shaft, which is directly underneath the village, this time with the Skulk Enderman boss bar just haunting me at the top of my screen. If it somehow targets me or blasts me when I'm in this small of a confined space, I'm a goner, so I'm just sitting here, my heart racing, as I'm tracing yet another heartbeat. Thankfully, the confined spaces work on keeping the Ravagers back from me. The Vindicators are probably the biggest threat, but I'm mining my way back and forth, headphones on, just trying to trace the heartbeat through left and right, and thank goodness it was directional. <gasps> no shot. Now, it seemed like this one was basically fully buried or it was exposed to a cave that was disconnected from where I was with the mine shafts. It was this one little gap that it had spawned in. I used several blocks of TNT to blast my way through the brain matter more than I was expecting to use. It cost me almost seven blocks just to get to the point where I could see the node itself. And then I did not hold back. The problem was the immediate spawning of a new node. That's just insulting. Literally one spawned as soon as I killed the current one. <laughs> I'm genuinely so upset. I'm genuinely so upset because we had it. I killed it. I found it was buried. I found it buried and a new one spawned the second I broke it. And now I don't know where the new one is. So the tunnel I had used to get to this location was already fully corrupted and converted. And I didn't want to go the way I had come in because I was super nervous about an enderman or some other mobs just being able to cut me off. As I started mining a new exit point, just heading to the south, I started hearing that heartbeat again, meaning that the next node was honestly relatively close by. The question was where? I marked the potential node location on my map as I made my way into somewhat uninfected caves, meaning that I was kind of at the end of the sphere of influence for this section of the horde. I mined my way up to the surface and ended up basically just barely on the other side of this body of water, but it was gonna keep growing. I have to go back around again to recover my horse. So I took a very wide berth as much as I possibly could, ending up in powdered snow and forgetting that that's actually still a threat. Seeing that one block of infested crying obsidian I'd left back here some 30 days prior. It was quite surrounded, but it would be a huge win if I could get it. I slowly crouched, creeping my way through all of the different sensors, just trying to get a little bit closer. My heart pounding, my hands being a little bit scared because that Enderman could appear at any moment. But I was finally able to make my way up close, break the block, summoning basically everything, but legging it out of there as fast as I could. Calculated risk. It took a little bit to clear out all the mobs who were hunting me down after, but thankfully my bow is a lot better and now I can fight a range in a more formidable way. But just when I thought I was doing well, an Enderman spawned, another Enderman spawned, meaning that it could teleport to my location considering I'm fighting the horde right now at any moment. I left, headed south, and started grabbing sand for more purification flasks when I got another notification. Negative 1084, 67, 228. Oh, that village is getting raided again. <laughs> oh no. Oh, it's going to kill the horse. I slept on the beach and resigned myself. I was going to go rescue my companion. I might be that one guy in the horror movie right now, in the zombie movie, who like opens the door to the base to save a dog and then everything pours in, but 
You know what? I, I would exactly do that. I would be that guy. I made a really wide sweep along the western edge of the village, staying out of the place where I was seeing notifications, eventually grabbing my horse and heading back, and thankfully the raid was only on wave 2 so far. I did consider fighting back for just a brief while, but then was mainly concerned on fighting mobs and potentially leading them back to my new village. The thing is, I know wave 10 is the Enderman, and I'll get obliterated. I mean, I could try to save this village, but this village is gone. So I decided to cut my losses and headed over the hill, once again forgetting about powdered snow. But once I was back at the village, I was sitting there taking notes, accidentally blasting the skull corn in the middle of town, and divvied up all of the sand, taking half of it for TNT, which I would need later, and smelting up the rest to get more glass to get more bottles. Now, if I wanted more TNT to take on another node, I'm gonna need more gunpowder. To get more gunpowder, I need to kill normal, uninfected creepers. But there was a problem. So the problem I think that I have is, um, the entire mob cap is probably filled with skulk mobs. So nothing's spawning anywhere. Oh no. <laughs> I genuinely think that might be it. Yep, wave six. I think the mob cap's full. I literally ran around the whole night and didn't see a single uninfected mob anywhere around this village. So it makes me think I really stepped in it and yeah, I'm kind of in an unprogressible state. I was able to make a few more purification flasks, which is definitely gonna come in handy. And the next day, while just riding around figuring, let's go get some more lapis so that I can enchant my gear, I was seeing that Skulk Raid bar very south from the village that it was supposedly targeting, which kind of gave me pause because I was practically at home at that point. I found a spot where the caves were heading down and instead dropped off the horse to go mining and ignored the whole raid problem, progressing my way all the way down to the deep slate and then almost immediately finding more skulk. So I think this is a dormant bit of skulk, or at least not part of the horde. It could be a whole new thing if I happen to cause another node to spawn, so this could be risky. This is a new one. I was just going for lapis. I mean, that being at the top scares me, but... Okay, hold up. Okay. But I'm mining up all of the wool, breaking the shriekers so I don't have to deal with a warden. And it's a somewhat more vanilla ancient city experience. Considering everything else that we've been dealing with to this point, feels like an absolute win. I got jump scared by the skull cord failing to destroy that village again, and I have no idea how because it is basically defenseless. Task failed successfully again. I didn't do anything. <laughs> Good to know. Okay. I'm thinking it might be the fact that it's kind of those better villages that have more what the Horde consider priority targets that are in weird positions and aren't able to be easily destroyed. I was able to find some more armor trims down here in the deep dark, including some mending pants, which just might come in handy, name tags for my horse, which I will inevitably lose, some music discs, some additional amethysts and bits and bobs. I did spawn a warden at one point in time, but honestly that feels way less dangerous compared to what I've been dealing with on a daily basis. But just as the thunder was crashing and the world was feeling ominous, I was about to catch a very lucky break. <gasps> huge. Absolutely huge. That infinity book is game changing. It means I no longer have to worry about running out of arrows in the middle of the fight. And on day 60 nice, I continued looting around, seeing what else I could find from this ancient city before it would turn into something that definitely wanted to eat me. I did eventually get to a chest that there was no possible way for me of blocking it off from the sensors. I've been running from Endermen and Ravagers, a blind warden who could only smell me. I mean, I've been nervous for a lot of this hundred days, but I normally do shower and everything, so there is that. But I kind of just ran in a panic and let all stealth out of the window. I don't know if setting off the vanilla shriekers also alerts the horde. That would be horrifying if that's the case. But something tells me we were testing that hypothesis in this moment. Found a bunch of decent enchanted books, a lot of echo shards, things that could 
potentially be useful, but I did kind of just end up running in a circle for a while. I wasn't making any major progress. So that was one major thing that I was looking for. Like the infinity book is great, don't get me wrong, but a god apple would allow me to survive in a fight versus a skulk enderman, at least maybe. It had taken me three the first time I had tangled with one, but then again, now I was in full protection diamond armor, so maybe there was a shot, I had a chance. But instead I left, god apple list, but a little bit better equipped. I did eventually find a few vanilla mobs here, which was promising. It made me think that maybe there was some space in the mob cap and I actually came out of the caves on the more northern end underneath the cherry grove so I could see my old village in the distance as the sun started to rise. I made my way south as the sun started to crest the hill, grabbing my horse, running back over to the village, and finally enchanting my bow with infinity. So, so worth it. That is a problem solver now. We just need to make sure it doesn't break. Now we can just do this. Like, look at the amount of inventory space we clear up. And that wasn't all I was upgrading. I found some respiration books, so my helmet would be a little bit better. I had more armor trims that I could duplicate so I could at least fight the apocalypse in fashion and fashion game is the end game. But I did a bit more organizing of my inventory with smelting up all of the raw ores, especially the gold, so I could make more golden apples for more purification flasks. I got sweeping edge on my sword. I don't know if that's gonna work. I don't really use sweeping edge too much and spent time breeding animals before heading far south, as far away as I possibly could, eventually seeing vanilla mobs. And this is so promising. I was able to, throughout the night, I mean, I was mainly dealing with skeletons, but I was able to, throughout the night, find quite a few creepers and get them killed as well, meaning I had gunpowder, meaning I had a chance at fighting the next node. The next morning, I crafted up all five pieces of TNT, Thank goodness for this extended recipe or else I would have gotten nothing. And I jumped on my horse to go check on the progress of the infection. The thing I'm worrying about right now is if the two main growth areas of Skulk intersect, would that do something weird with the mass or would it kind of reactivate everything that feels somewhat dormant on the mountain? I say dormant, look at how far it's grown, but at least there's not a node there. So it's not spawning things as aggressively. I looped my way back around to the village just to get an idea of what was going on around here. But when I went to go grab those hay bales, I was blasted by the skulk enderman, which caused me to panic and just run. Golden apples and then figure out what I was gonna have to do. I didn't wanna lose my horse, it was my OG horse. So I thought, let me head back around, see if I can go and get them, get them out of there before anything goes badly. The problem is, by the time I had made my way back around and recovered, there was just a pile of goop where my horse formerly was. Oh, it absolutely killed the horse. With those mobs, it's dead. It's dead. I took a quick nap waiting for the next day where I fought my way over dealing with quite a few mobs respawning and found out that my horse's death seemed to be the catalyst for a massive portion of growth on this side of the village. I basically had just barely pushed it over where it was starting to grow. There was an insane amount of mobs over here already and multiple hives and the enderman was just chilling on the hill, just barely there to blast me. And I was angry. I've wanted some revenge. So it's time to push my luck. I got it, I got it, I killed the Enderman. <laughs> I killed the Enderman. <laughs> Yo. Okay, that's massive. 
that node's gonna be vulnerable. We need to attack now. Knowing that in taking out a boss, I set back the growth of the horde, put it kind of into this recovery state, I figured now was my chance. I threw down a purification flask, both to get myself the purity enchant, as well as kind of draw the attention of the skulk overall, before starting to attack from the other side. Once I had cleared out what I thought was enough, to have a bunch of mobs up at the top and potentially fill the mob cap, I dove underwater. Now there was another Skulk Enderman somewhere around here, which really had me nervous, but I'm just trying to move in for a tactical strike on the node itself. I retraced steps that I had made a long time ago, using purification flasks to clear a beachhead without being immediately concerned. I was following the heartbeat when I turned the corner and saw some growth. Mining in, this is actually the previous node, not the current one. The growth down here was pretty rapid, which definitely made me think that I was close to the node itself, or at least a large quantity of spore spewers, which I could potentially kill to slow down things overall. I found my way to an underground semi-flooded cave that was filled with a pretty good chunk of mobs, which made me think this might have been some sort of defensive position. I used more purification flask and then just started mining down, again trying to track to that heartbeat sound effect. Getting to a cave where as I moved along, I would get an idea on the axis of where it could potentially be. Peeking around the corners, which I got a lot better at since my one chunk video, go watch that, that one was a lot of fun. At one point in time, I followed down a cave through a little bit of water, seeing some more brain blocks off in the distance. And lucky me, this was where I needed to go. With one node down and an immediate reed spawn, if... Oh, it's a shovel. Okay. Makes sense. Scoop the brains out. Yes! No, and it's close because I can hear it again. It's over that way now. If nothing else, I'm really kind of containing the horde. <laughs> I say containing, look how much ground it's covered, but at least it feels like I'm doing something. I'm fighting my way through several of the caves, dealing with a few summoners that I had to be very careful about. The ravagers are extremely lethal here in close quarters but I found quite a few hives and other things here underground. Destroying them would allow me to just, if nothing else, slow the growth. And finding a bunch of living rock spires around here meant I found a whole bunch of calcite. And if I can get even more crying obsidian for more purified souls, that means I can make a whole bunch of purifiers and really start fighting back against the infection instead of my little kind of Clorox bottles that I'm currently using. Working my way through that cave, I did see more brain blocks off in the distance, and I was able to find my way in towards the next node pretty quickly, the fastest I've ever done this. One TNT later. Done. Heck yes. I think that might have said a new one spawned already though. Now I didn't know this at the time because they happened so rapidly, but you can actually see how quickly it spawned another one. And that just goes to show how much mass I've allowed the horde to accumulate at this point. They can do it that rapidly. Now, in all fairness, also, I had these settings pretty aggressive in the mod. Uh, shout out to the author, actually, who allowed me to configure it to make this version of the Horde this aggressive. You'll be able to play that in my version of the mod pack, but go check out theirs for something that is at least a little bit more fair and balanced. But eventually I made my way out of all of the infected caves back into solid, normal, uninfested stone, digging my way up and throwing down some torches, ending up pretty south and a little bit east, basically splitting the distance between the new grave mine sites and the original one on the first mountain that I had encountered it in. After putting down a big X to mark it, forgetting that I had waystones for some reason, I slept in the field and thought we need to do something before the skulk really crosses this river right here, 
or else it's going to start making its way down to my new village pretty rapidly. First thing, I was using Purification Flask to just try to push everything back, then using my hoe to mine up a ton of these skulk blocks themselves, spawning in some mobs, not being too overly worried about it, and feeling a little bit more aggressive. I mean, I had just killed its brain twice in a row recently, so fighting things like a skeleton or a single ravager, that didn't seem too bad. The Vindicators are actually one of the biggest threats because they move at a pretty rapid pace. They're only one or two hits with a Fire Aspect Sharpness Sword, so it's mainly about not being hit. I made my way back to my village, smelting up a ton of gold that I had collected while I was down in the mines trying to kill the two nodes, grabbing a few apples from the market area and accidentally smacking one of the villagers. Whoops. They mean to, I'm sorry. Honestly, I'm trying to save the world, so they should be totally okay with that. Day 76, I headed back up towards this Skulk beachhead on the southern shore. I'm trying to push it backwards. A lot of the damage that I had already done had regrown, which makes me think that the newest node is potentially a little bit further south than all of the others. And I'm gonna have to do something really fast if I don't want this area completely encapsulated. So I built a few towers and put one of the purifiers on top of each. Now the purifiers are interesting. They're like a hyped up version of the flask and will constantly push back the infection whenever they're active. However, the horde is aggressive towards them, and if they do too much damage, they'll destroy it forever. So you need to make sure that you're protecting them. Having them up on towers like this meant that they really couldn't be attacked by anything underneath. The only real danger was maybe skeletons attacking from the high ground, but me operating right here with a bow at my side meant that I could counter range with range relatively easily. Plus there's the added benefit of they set all skulk mobs on fire, which means I'm doing significant damage to them too. That continued into the next morning where the Southern shore was starting to look a little bit more normal. I still had to do things like break hives manually, clean up the odd few blocks of skulk infestation here and there. But realistically, I had successfully done it. I had pushed the horde back across this river and it might feel like a very small victory, only a hundred blocks or so, but it was one of the first times that I had gained ground against it, and I felt like pushing. I crossed the river, working my way in, seeing another hive where I could get even more resin, and then being chased into one of the caves, finding some stone brick just at the back of the tunnel here. So yeah, those dungeons right there were actually a mod that I had put in into this pack when I was building an entirely separate one. It has nothing to do with the skull cord, but you know what? I'm not gonna say no to a big sword in this kind of situation. Wait, oh my God, I found a totem. Dancer's sword. Oh, I found like a legendary artifact. And while it felt good to have pushed the infection back across the river, hold the line, the real question would be, would it stick? Would it work? Or would it just immediately reinfect the second I backed off from this area and I needed to leave those purifiers there 24 seven if they were going to do anything? As I headed off to just do the final bit of cleanup here, another Skulk Enderman had spawned and I was nervous it would be where I had just been fighting everything. So the next morning after waking up, I turned around to see that I was confronted with a few dudes with crossbows. I used their absolutely abysmal trigger discipline to deal with most of that situation, killing off the stragglers and then focusing my attention back on the Skulk. The fact that we had gained ground and it hadn't been reinfected yet made me think I could push a little bit further. So I worked my way around on the left side of the shore where the river actually ended and I was getting guts here, just putting the purifiers down on the ground instead of worrying about building them up on towers. Mainly because if the mobs are there, they're focusing on me because I'm what's killing them even though the purifier is what's actually killing them. I spent a good chunk of the remainder of this day just fighting mobs for the whole day, basically. I put myself way up over level 30, and the next morning, you wouldn't know that all of this was skulk. It all just looked like dirt and grass again. The problem I had was all of a sudden I was getting messages about the skulk horde having successfully destroyed objectives, even though I didn't know that another raid had started, which made me nervous and it had me run back to the village thinking maybe something was there. Oh my God, I didn't even notice. That's massive. I was so busy fighting over here, it just expanded this way instead. Oh no. What do I even do with that? Okay, real quick. 
Can I make another purifier? So it turns out I was able to make another batch of purifiers, bringing me up to a grand total of five. I had lost one at some point in all of that fighting. I did a little bit more enchanting on things, just seeing what I could put on that legendary sword. And I got sharpness, but I think the fire aspect's gonna do most of the work here. All right, new horse, your turn. That new horse was actually awful, so I didn't even bother bringing them along. Instead, working on foot. Once again, just trying to hold the horde back from this side of the river and then swimming across to get an idea. It turns out my first horse's death was basically the catalyst it needed to fully overtake the entire village. I don't know how it was that bad from one mob's death, but I spent all, uh, and I mean all, of day 79 just fighting mobs here and trying to get an idea of how bad it was. I'm throwing down purifiers, just trying to hold back the line, carve a path, or at least stop the growth where it stands, force it back underground, force it to redirect in another direction that wouldn't potentially lead to another village. And by the time I was halfway through the day, I was making good progress. As I would get close to the village, I was getting more messages, which meant this is where the raid target was, but it felt like there was a secondary raid of sorts going on right now. I was kiting the ravagers. That's the biggest damage dealing threat to these purifiers that I have to worry about, making sure that their aggro was on me and not what they're getting rid of. As I kept the attention of a lot of the aggressive mobs in this area, the final wave completed and I once again failed successfully. Despite not actively being there and protecting the village, I was doing a great job at protecting the village. Just pat myself on the back a little bit there. That feels nice. But two days worth of fighting seemed to make a difference here. As it started getting a little bit later though, I collected up all of the purifiers just to make sure that I wouldn't lose any, having a quick nap because my supplies were starting to run a little low. But the next morning, things were gonna get a little weird. Wait, what? Why am I hearing Minecraft music? So it's kind of weird having a soundtrack to this because one of the first things I usually do is turn off music so I don't need to worry about the mod packs. But I'm just trying to figure out where that was coming from. Something down there is playing Minecraft music and I have no idea what. I made my way down into the caves underneath, which were, no surprise, infested with skulk all over. But the interesting thing was one very musical creeper. Was it just a musical creeper? Was it just like some sort of party? What was that? Genuinely, what was that? Probably shouldn't let the purifier alone. Oh, it's live. Okay, good. Oh, but it's, it now, it's growing more that way again. With that distraction done, I was back to fighting off against the fungus that, you know, wants to control everything in the world and consume the entire world and make all things skulk because that's what it really wants to do. I had to be careful because as I was starting to push back further and further, I eventually got to the point where I was seeing a skulk enderman boss bar. And if that thing started blasting me, I was going to start dying. Oh, there it is. My only hope right now is that it stayed focused on the villagers somehow while I was focusing on killing or at least consuming, burning up a lot of the mass to make it fight me instead of being able to focus on growing. And everything was going really well. I was making a lot of progress until it started raining. The fire damage that's able to be dealt to these mobs from my sword or the purifier was the only thing that was really helping, so I had to retreat. And I'm glad I did, because if you take a look at my armor, it was just about to break. And this all is pretty good on enchants, so I want to make sure that I'm saving it. I ran my way back over to the village and was just taking stock of what I had, knowing that I had some upgrades to do in the morning. So the following day, I focused on enchanting things, getting a fully enchanted bow. It's only power four, but that should be more than enough to cover the bases, and focusing on crafting up additional versions of my armor, getting some base enchants on there, hoping for some additional combinations, and getting things repaired, or at least I would if I had the experience to do so. So that forced me to go on a little bit of an experience gathering spree. First things first was just breeding some mobs, and then I decided to do a little bit of exploring. I'm thinking if I can go down, 
down, I need more diamonds to be able to repair all of my armor, and underwater caves are my best bet. Using magma blocks to be able to breathe, I just swam from place to place to place, eventually digging up into a cave via a geode that I saw exposed, and then seeing a mine shaft off in the distance because of course I found a mine shaft again. This one had a spawner inside, which is good news for me. I could maybe make that into a farm, although it's a little bit late in the playthrough to potentially test that. So instead, I just focused on grabbing all of the diamonds, any gold that I found, and any golden apples as a freebie so I can make more purification shards. I still collected any other treasure that might be potentially valuable, but those are the main things that are impactful for what I really want to do, because before these 100 days are up, I want to go take on the ancient node and try to cure this world from the actual problem that we see here. But after finding another spawner with another musical zombie here, I killed them getting a backpack with a jukebox upgrade, which I was able to put into my main backpack, and now I can play Minecraft music whenever I want, even though I very rarely do. But I continued mining around for additional diamonds and hitting up any loot chest that I can find, getting a very lucky break. Oh, that is huge. Sharpness five. Ho ho ho, and a blue bomb. Also, I was muted, but that jukebox player is sick. This honestly feels like a really nice break from the endless squishy horde of death. That sharpness book was going to make a massive difference. Being able to just do more damage, eliminate mobs a little bit faster, is that much quicker I can burn down the mass of the horde and potentially make an impact, especially if I'm going to attack the more highly fortified areas that are going to be filled with more and more mobs. I spent the whole day basically just caving. It was a nice distraction from the apocalyptic events that were happening up there on the surface, even though if you check the map as I'm looking at it right now, all of the damage I had done to the village earlier had fully regrown and then some. I didn't notice it at the time, but taking my attention away from the constant battle against the horde was going to cost me dearly. But once I returned back up to the surface, had a quick nap, and then focused on recrafting everything, I was able to make new and additional versions of my chest plates and boots, getting them enchanted, focusing on a little bit of TNT from the creepers, smelting up all of the gold that I could, breeding all of the mobs, and then going out in search for additional apples to be able to make more golden apples for more purification flasks. All the meanwhile, having this deforestation served the additional benefit of having less plant matter for the horde to absorb when it eventually, inevitably, crossed the river again. Once I had everything I needed supply-wise, at least physical supplies, it was time to go mining for experience and... Well, wouldn't you know, I happen to know some blocks that happen to drop experience if you hit them with a hoe that happen to be multiplying at an extremely rapid rate and are readily available right here on the surface. So I spent a good portion of day 85 just mining up Skulk to get myself all the way back up above and beyond on level 30, dealing with whatever mobs were spawning. I was still around the dormant node, so they were kind of lower tier. And believe me, I was also mining up leaves whenever I could to try to get more apples. It was kind of a very ho-centric kind of a day. Do I safely think I can put that line in the video and none of you will make a joke out of it? No. No, I don't. Am I going to include that line in the video regardless? Yes. Yes, I am. Now, once you all have your minds out of the gutter, I'm continuing fighting off the skull cord, using that same hoe to be able to push things back when my shield broke. That puts me in a pretty big disadvantage here. See, there were multiple Ravagers. One, I can tank, I can kite around, I can deal with even one hit from it, because in the cooldown of it being able to hit me again, I can basically kill it. Three, cover each other's cooldowns pretty well, and those hit really hard. Once I was able to clear them, I made my way back around and figured with the growth being so aggressive to the north and the west, the new grave mine site was probably down underneath on that side instead of in the caves that I had pretty thoroughly explored at this point. Plus, everything was touching at this point, so it was all one big pile of goop anyway. But before I'm going to be able to go tackle that, I'm going to need more supplies. I crafted myself up a diamond shield to allow myself a little bit extra defense, and then went home taking whatever I could as far as the enchanting to get some basic enchants on all of my armor and then get that combined, and then went back to fight the horde some more to get my levels back up because I was basically spending them right away. Didn't seem to matter if I fought them in the day or the night, so I just did a little bit of nighttime skulk battling, you know, to mix things up, eventually finding a horse that I had left in a pit somewhere, 
please leave a comment when I parked this horse here and how long they were waiting, riding them back to home and then getting some additional enchants on my chest plate and then adding that sharpness five book to my sword. Day 87, I was looking at the map, trying to get an idea of where the skulk had all grown to, when in looking around, I saw the tiniest indication of a nether portal at the very furthest south, just barely in my render distance. And I need more purifiers if I'm gonna continue fighting back against the horde. So I jumped on my horse, jumped off a cliff into some water, and then rode my horse all the way through the entire known world, getting to a single nether portal at the edge of what I had explored that had everything I needed. Yes, oh, huge. There's four pieces here. Oh, this is huge. Actively restricting myself from the nether for this challenge really forced me to take it on in a different way. If I would have had piglins, I would have been able to just do bartering to get crying obsidian, but this forced exploration, and that's why I have the nether off in my version of the pack. I think it's better for it. But I made my way all the way back towards the village because in its current form, it's not entirely useful to me. I have to do a little bit of, you know, trickery first. I used a purification flask to push everything back, placing down the crying obsidian, and then trying to bait mobs closer to it, thinking if I can get the right one to die pretty close, Come on. like this skulk creeper, everything would be infected. And that worked for three out of four pretty quickly. Oh yes, that worked perfectly. So I mined all of that up and then just did a little bit more battling here when I saw the message. A skulk enderman had spawned, the boss bar was right there, it was right on my head. So I killed whatever was super close by, took a quick nap, and then figured it's basically now or never. So I crafted up all of the purifiers that I could, realizing that I had miscalculated. Three of those. Okay, we're short on resin. We need more resin. Checking around in the area that I was in, there were several hives relatively close by, and if I could push to any one of them, I could unlock the resin with just a simple pair of shears, meaning that I could continue pushing and just building wave after wave after wave of purifiers, with each kind of covering the line of the previous one and really making a dent, a true curing of the area, not just trying to prevent infection, really fighting back. I spread things out pretty thin, having to constantly bounce back from one to the next to the next, eventually getting to the point where the hives were being disinfected, or at least all of the ground around them, getting an additional two more crafted right after that, meaning I could bolster with reinforcements. Once I had everything I needed from the hives, I would actually break them to try to slow down the growth even further. Fighting through the horde and now having multiple of these down, even an army of four or five ravengers, something that had held me back, caused me to run just a few days earlier, and now something that I was just standing there tanking and taking out. And after a good day's work, a full day's work, mind you, take a look at that map. Take a look at the hole we had punched into the skulk's line and we were holding it. That progress continued into the next day. I was actually able to pick up some of the rearmost purifiers, moving them forward, leapfrogging, and continuing to invest even further into this offensive. Eventually I got to the point where I was taking out multiple hives, I was able to get all of the resin I need and then destroy them, making real progress. I'm making progress. But the thing I didn't realize is that had come at a cost and my boots had broken. Boots can be repaired. Oh no, my boots broke. So that was potentially a worthwhile trade. Some really nice sneakers or the fate of the universe. I know what a lot of people would say, but for this specific situation, I was feeling altruistic. So I just pushed forward and the horde was trying to push back through wave after wave after wave of mobs or multiple hives spawning basically right on top of each other, right at the edge of the current purified zone. At day 90, with just 10 days left in this world, I finally felt that this was at least somewhat even footing. One very decked out and dangerous boy versus a billion skulk spores? One big hive mind? 1v1 doesn't sound as impressive, but let's go with it because I mean, they basically are. The problem was though, 
The ground that I was starting to cover and really trying to punch through and bifurcate the skulk forces, there were small gaps in the area on my rear flank, which meant that it was able to reinfect. The purifiers were being spread out over too much ground. I wasn't able to fully cover everything, which meant I needed to kind of readjust my tactics slightly. I did a lot more manual disinfection. I was fighting a lot more mobs, having to go back and replace purifiers on my rear because spore spewers were spawning in, trying to retake the land that I had covered. But considering that it had moved from the aggressive mobs to the more growth-based ones made me think I was on the right track. If I was changing the horde's behavior, it was adapting to what I was doing and it knew direct confrontation wasn't working anymore. The problem is just as everything was going right, nature had to throw a spanner in the works. Oh no, not rain. Not now. No. So since I couldn't do a lot as far as pushing back now and losing damage over time, the damage from the purifiers, I picked up everything that I could, recollected, and slept on the other side of the river. Because six days of solid combat meant that I needed to repair my stuff. The shield I had just made was less than a quarter health, a lot of my armor was pretty damaged, and I needed to do some re-upping on golden apples and purification flasks. And I made some discoveries along the way. To deactivate the ancient skulk. Oh. Yo, wait, I didn't read that. I can attack the the original node. First things first though was upgrading both my boots and my pickaxe so I'd be able to harvest things a little bit faster. Realizing I had to infect another bit of crying obsidian, I threw some unbreaking on the shield considering I didn't have any diamonds or anything else left to repair it. I was pretty spent at this point. But I headed back up north, going to plop down the crying obsidian and <laughs> Kind of taking this stupid route, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> okay, that was stupid, <laughs> but funny. And it turns out the Skulk had taken advantage of my one day break and it had already reclaimed over half of the land that I had purified. Take me six days to fight to make that much space and it took it less than one to regain half of it. I spent some time kiting mobs around just trying to get a creeper close towards that one piece of crying obsidian, eventually doing so very late in the evening, using that to get an infected block and then kind of realizing live what I just told you in voiceover. It regrew over half of what it defeated in a day. That took me five to to make that progress. This is impossible. There's no defeating this without taking on the main node. And it's raining. Well, that matches how I feel. And the ominous rain reflected on another tragedy that was about to befall me. After all of that, my horse gets eaten by a freaking tiger. Are you kidding me? Oh, <laughs> that horse survived the freaking apocalypse. It gets eaten by Raishan or something. I don't know. Whoever the tiger is from Jungle Book. I, oh. <laughs> Now stranded without a ride. Having nothing to be able to easily get over the mountain, I figured I'll just spend a little bit more time today mining up everything that I can over here, trying to get myself back up for one final round of enchants before I focus on attacking the main ancient node. It was going to be the most heavily fortified position, the most infected area of the entire map, been literally growing since day one, so I figure I needed everything I could possibly get. But once I was done here and I headed back up over through the cherry blossom biome and back towards home, I noticed some familiar cyan just a little bit south. Oh, oh, no, 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 that's the problem. Oh, that's very, this is south. 
I thought, let's not even bother with flasks. I threw down purifiers immediately. There was no summoners on the surface, which made me think that this was the very, very early stages of an emergence, and I had potentially caught it just in time when a Skulk Enderman spawned, and it was definitely hunting, most likely around the area that I had been fighting the Skulk in for most of the past 15 days or so. Hoping that that was the case, just trying to get visual confirmation of that while the purifiers ran, I climbed up over the mountain, just trying to peek around, and I didn't see anything right away, which gave me a little bit of a respite. But this area was covered in spores. While there might not be anything on the surface, there was enough to give me the lure effect, which meant that they were relatively close to the surface. This wasn't just growth from deep down. There's probably a cave right underneath here, and a quick bit of mining down showed that that was the case. It was pretty heavily infected with four spewers relatively close to the surface. Oh my God, this is so many. I spent some time just trying to take out whatever I could using the purifier to push back and push down the skulk deeper underground. This was more of a surgical strike where everything that I was doing in just trying to take everything out around the village was more generally explosive. The somewhat more methodical approach was definitely going to be important for clearing things up this far south. I did almost forget about the lure effect before returning to my village though, which could have been disastrous. Oh shoot. I think I might have just led them directly to this village. If the Enderman scouts from here, there's no way it doesn't notice it. I mean, it's already growing this way. This village is on borrowed time. Knowing that I likely potentially didn't have much longer here. I crafted up another sword, checking out what enchants it would get, getting some unbreaking, which would allow me to keep my sword for a little bit longer, which was definitely going to come in handy. I named it the Skulk Slayer because that is very much what it's been doing, pulling the weight of these 100 days, getting my armor buffed up with just the few loose diamonds that I had. I don't have mending, I don't have anything else along those lines, we're rolling pretty thin. It is the true apocalypse. And day 94, it was time. It was time to see if I could cure this thing once and for all. I made my way through all of the forests, over all of the hills, back towards spawn. Seeing that it was growing further out and the map had just barely updated, but it was just kind of probably on the edge of what was rendered from the spawn chunks. The only thing that was really saving grace for this world that this hadn't grown from here and infected everything. I slowly made my way around the perimeter, trying to find an area where I could punch in and establish a beachhead. There was nothing really safe, so I thought, Let's take this a little bit more overtly. Putting down a purifier on that side of the river, waiting for a whole bunch of mobs to spawn in, and then sneaking my way out and around, basically sacrificing my forward attacking unit to be able to establish something a little bit closer in, where I made a platform up on the top of several of the trees, like I had done with some of my initial purifiers on the southern beachhead of the river, and just started letting that do its work. A bunch of mobs spawned in, they were all aggressive as they could be, but they couldn't reach up here, which meant that all I had to do for the moment was just kind of pick them off and wait. Try to understand where the forces were coming from, predict, take them out, and then get a second purifier down. And then a third. But I fought throughout the whole night, going into day 95, where I remembered, oh yeah, I had left some obsidian here, so there's a couple more purifiers that I can make from that. Now feeling a little bit safer, I put down multiple onto the surface, definitely drawing more ire from the skulk mobs that were around and having to much more actively patrol around everything, but now having everything's attention, getting myself a little bit of an area that I cleaned out and purified that I could potentially operate out of. Now, I don't think there's any chance of me curing spawn, at least not from here, and not while the ancient node pulses underground. So this is, if anything else, a distraction to force it to be regrowing and spawning mons up here on the surface. So for when I finally decide to head underground and make a break for it, the horde would potentially be focused elsewhere. The following morning, I figured it was time. This was as good a chance as any as I was gonna have. There was a lull in mob spawning, which made me think that it was busy gaining more mass before it could spawn more mobs on my face. 
I set up a small chamber, throwing down a purifier in a box inside of it, thinking that will hopefully protect it while I'm underground far away and unable to fight directly. Once the first wave of mobs had finished spawning, I threw down a second purifier, also in another box, finding the spot where I'd gone to that hive 80 days ago. Imagine how long and how much effort it took to just mine into this one block, and now we are actively curing and purifying a major swath of land here. Just goes to show how much progress we made over this hundred days. But I found my way down into a cave, started mining down in a simple two by one tunnel, and then straight down vertically like you never ever should do, eventually entering a large chamber with a massive deep slate structure hidden within. You could just barely hear a heartbeat from up this far, knowing that once I get closer, the oppressive thumps of the skulk horde were going to be all around me. I bridged out to get a little bit closer, finding a spot where I could get some water down and then ride that water column down to the uppermost layers of the citadel, mining my way in through the edges to just see what was here. It was deeply infected. The heartbeat was ever present and the spores just hung in the air. This is where everything had started. There's basic spawners and everything because normally you interact with it. But me, for me, the horde was just triggered remotely and set loose to consume this world and potentially me. I grabbed whatever loot I could find, the gunpowder being one of the things I was happiest about, using that to craft up a few more blocks of TNT, thinking that if all else fails, we just start blasting and explode our way out of here. It took over a day to loot some of the upper levels as I continued delving deeper down, the skulk growth getting thicker and more intense with each layer descended. Eventually it got to the point where the zombies were spawning, forcing me to trigger sensors, and fighting them off had me on fire and worried about a few more dangerous things. And then the warden spawned. Now when you fight a warden in an ancient city, it's big, it's open, you have space to run around, but there's a small, cramped, confined quarters, very short sight lines. So if it came around the corner, I was dead. And the two heartbeats intermingling with each other, it's just this awful, unnerving chorus. Hearing the whines, the moans of the warden combined with the more dangerous things that I knew lurked underneath, had me really worried that I would not survive this. I heard the warden's attack charge and then blast away, thankfully not aimed in my direction. Oh my god. And then, the two heartbeats together, almost pounding as hard as my own, I entered the final chamber. The ancient skulk node suspended amongst tendrils of that fungus, just right there in the middle of the room. But I had to be smart. There were still sensors here. There were still mobs being spawned in defense. I fought my way through the first wave and then threw down some blocks to keep myself protected. I had to be careful about the sound that I was generating, that it wouldn't attract the warden above, and also wouldn't spawn more mobs, but I had to kill them because those mobs themselves were already pretty dangerous. I threw down a purifier here, thinking as long as everything's aggressive, we might as well give it a good reason to be, and that would help me push back against the summoners, disinfecting some of the wood around here, having dirt and grass be right here next to the source of all evil in this world. Once there was an opening, I pillared myself up on cobblestone, stood in front of the ancient node, and went to end this terror and failed. No. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Oh, this can't be happening. This was supposed to be the big finale. My big success. Sure, I'll take a god apple, why not? No, 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 no. I was supposed to win here. If I couldn't defeat the node here until I attacked every other node in the world, and given how fast and aggressive those nodes spawned, this felt like a losing gamble. It felt like I'd almost been tricked, I'd been trapped. I thought that this would be where I had to go, what I had to do, and I failed. And just as I was starting to come to terms with that, it sounded like the warden was closing in. Thankfully, it seemed to be aimed at something else, so I mined my way out through the ground and then over and across, climbing up some of the water to avoid the ravagers that were here, 
and then just punching a hole up to the surface, mining my way up as fast as I could as I watched the skulk actively regrowing over the space that I had protected, making me think that the purifiers that I had up here had failed. By the time I got up to the surface, it was already almost the middle of the night, and I could hear mobs everywhere as far as the eye could see. Creepers and zombies tried dropping into the hole to kill me, and I could see ravagers flanking my potential surfacing point. I ended up using a flask and the skull horn that I had crafted to eventually cause the briefest of windows, breaking down the skulk that was guarding my tunnel, dealing with one final zombie, and then just running as fast as I could, not caring about whatever sensors I set off. I made my way into the middle of the area that was still just barely purified, pillaring up against one of the trees to just keep myself away from the dangers down on the surface. But I should have been more aware of the dangers from within, above and around, the ones from across reality. <laughs> Wait. Found you. Thank you all so much for watching. The multiverse never left. You just stopped paying attention.